Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. In this video I'm constructing the wooden carriage for the cannon that I've been building and I'm making the entire thing out of white oak. If you haven't seen the previous videos you might want to watch those first. Links are in the description. So there you can see 10 spokes, so it's going to be 36 degrees between each one, and because the spokes are against each other, each angle is 18 degrees. So did you know that according to the U.S. government, a cannon is not a firearm. If it fires black powder and it's loaded from the muzzle and doesn't take a cartridge, like a typical gun takes a, a cartridge, which is a bullet, a casing, and powder all in one unit. But if you load it the old-fashioned way, like a muzzle loader, that is not a firearm. Not a gun. At least in the U.S. Alright, so I have a hub on this side, and I have an identical hub. But I want it on the other side, and I want the two concentric. I'm going to use my lathe to help me do that. I've got a hole through both hubs. The hole is concentric with the outer diameter of the hub. So this thing's wobbling a little bit as I drill it. So I am going to plunge with this half inch router bit. You know, that's going to be able to cut rather than getting pushed aside. So now I have a perfectly concentric hole all the way through. And then I can use that to align the other piece. Now I didn't use the bit that I cut the hole with because it actually was loose and wobbling and would allow this to move too much. So on my metal lathe I turned that down and that fits really snug and doesn't allow that to move.
So a traditional wheel would have a metal tire or a rim that's fitted around the outside. And you actually place that by making the rim slightly smaller than the diameter of the wheel, then heating the rim in a fire so that it expands to slightly bigger to where you can pound it into place. And then you cool it off and it will shrink down and tighten up your, your wheel. That's really not necessary for this. I may do it in the future, I don't know. But for now, I think this is gonna work. So I've been trying to decide what I want to do on the axle. And I have this um, bronze bushing material that would make a nice bronze bushing. I'm going to have exactly one half inch down the center, and then I can make a half inch axle that's going to go into that. That means I need to drill this out to about an inch. Now I need to make a bronze bushing that will fit in that hole I just drilled. First I bore the internal hole so that I get it concentric. So that bit is one size down from half an inch. Then I come with a half inch reamer which will get it exactly one half inch and perfectly round. Hmm. Half inch on the money. That's what you get with a reamer. All right, so I'm gonna leave some grooves in here for the epoxy so that I don't end up with a nice bonded epoxy to the wood because the wood's so rough. And then this is so smooth that this ends up sliding out. So I'm gonna make some grooves for that epoxy to key into. I'm going to try a hundred thousandths cut. I don't know if it's going to do this or not. So I started at an inch, just under. I need to turn this down to 498, or just under half an inch. Oh, let's go another hundred. This part of the axle needs to fit precisely inside the bronze bushing that we machined earlier. That is exactly 500 thousandths of an inch. In order for it to spin well without a lot of play, this needs to be between 498 and 499 thousandths. I'm shooting for 498 and a half. All right, so 515. Five oh one. So I'm using a bronze in the wheel. This is going to be inside that bronze, and I'll just put some machine oil in there. I'm actually not sure what's the best thing to do. Should this shaft be polished smooth and just rely on the bronze for lubrication, or should I leave it a little bit rough so there's something to carry the oil? I'm curious, any machinists out there, what's the right answer here? Is this supposed to be smooth when used against bronze, or is there supposed to be some oil carrying? 500. I'm going to polish it down to like 498 and a half. See what that did. 499. Just over 99. Yeah, I need to focus up here a little more. I need one over here and a half there. Alright, middle is done. 
Okay, that's four ninety-eight and a half. This up here is four ninety-eight point seven. Point six. I'm happy with that. That's close enough. I'm <laughs> I'm going to the ten thousandth now. So I have to say, you know, this is a cheapo grizzly lathe but I'm able to nail this to whatever ten thousandth of an inch I want. It's hard to complain. All right, now I need to machine this part to about 510. It doesn't need to be as precise. But this side's going in the wood and it's going to be held with a set screw, so it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm 510 to 511 on that, which is fine. I need to come in and make a, a journal for the set screw. So that gives my set screw a place to live and, and hold that in place. Now I just need to clean up that shoulder. So there's one axle. This part's going to go in here. I left that proud so that it can rub there instead of rubbing on the wood. Then I'm going to have probably just a cotter pin, something like that, down here. Now if only I had two. Feels like a crossbow. Huh. That'd be kind of cool to make. I then fired up the forge to make some metal straps that would hold the cannon barrel into the carriage. I had to make a jig to form it so that it would fit properly.
So I have a problem. The yellow color of the barrel uh, clashes with the yellow of the wood, and I just don't think this looks very good. Now this is a replica of a Civil War cannon, and typically the carriages of a Civil War cannon were painted black. That said, I really don't like the idea of painting this thing. These wheels look so cool. Covering it with paint and making it look plastic just seems like a bad idea. I could stain it, but staining is definitely not traditional. That also just seems kind of lame, going to a hardware store and buying some stain. So I have an idea. It might be a good idea. It might be a horrible idea. I really don't know. I'm talking about scorching it with a torch and then putting a coat of linseed oil on it to seal it. Now, I've never done a torch finish on anything before. I did a little test piece you can actually see in the bottom of the screen there and it still allows the grain to show through and I think it's gonna look okay, but man, it's really kind of causing me some stress. I've got a lot of work into this carriage and now I'm going to take a torch to it? Oh boy. I hope this isn't a bad idea. So it actually took me a few days to work up the courage to do this. Uh, just a hard thing to do to put so much care into every joint and get everything so perfect and then take a giant torch to it. So uh, it may not look like it in the video, but there was uh, quite a bit of stress here. And uh, like right now, this uh, the spokes actually start burning. <laughs> this is stressful woodworking. Well, I gotta tell you, I did not like doing that. The whole time doing it, I'm telling myself, you know, I can always paint it. I'm actually pretty happy with it. How many of you had a heart attack when you saw me come at it with the torch? And how many of you are saying, eh, it's not bad. That's what I'm doing. So I put on two heavy coats and now I'm wiping it off with a clean, dry cloth. And here it is after wiping it down. You know, I had my doubts about burning this thing, but I'm really liking the way it looks. So you can still see how it went together. You can see the individual boards, but overall it's a black carriage. Here it is after the linseed oil has cured overnight. I think that looks very cool. Way better than paint. That is a cannon. Hey guys, here's the deal. So this was a carriage build video. I think the carriage came out really nice. Uh, I have one more video planned for this on Farmcraft, and that is gonna be a start to finish build. Look for that coming out hopefully next week. It's gonna be all the way from melting the copper to the finished product. Uh, should be a really good video. So if you wanna see more of this cannon, come to my other channel, Guncraft 101. That's right, Guncraft 101. Guncraft 101. Link in description. We'll see you over there. I'm also gonna be posting this entire series on gunstreamer.com and I'm really excited to announce I recently got approved for a channel on full30.com. So all of my videos are going to, going to be over there as well. Now you may notice on Guncraft 101 on YouTube that uh, some of the videos are gonna be disappearing. Uh, that's because they're not in compliance with the uh, community regulations. But I do have some really good content planned for Guncraft 101. So keep an eye out for that. Some exciting stuff coming up. And look out for my complete build video next week. It's gonna be a good one. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.
not a cannon. That is a cannon.